grace to you and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ, his Son, the Savior, and the Holy Spirit, who descends upon this word of God today to bless you, to reveal to you his truth, that indeed he cares for you, even with tears. Amen. Emotions are good. And in fact, the scripture for this day teaches us that emotions are godly. Jesus weeps. And not for the only time in the scriptures as they are recorded for our learning he also wept at the tomb of Lazarus, his dear friend, the brother of Mary and Martha. In this scripture for our hearing today, we find him weeping over the city of Jerusalem as he approaches it for the final time. For soon he will enter into that city riding on a donkey on that Sunday known as Palm Sunday, the first day of that particular week that would end with his own death and burial in the tomb. But that's not why he's weeping. He's not weeping for himself. He's weeping for those whom he holds dear. The city of Jerusalem. In the Old Testament era, which Jesus is bringing to a close even as he ushers in the New Testament era with his resurrection from the dead on the Sunday following his entry into Jerusalem. He has come to bring peace to them. Not just the kind of peace for which we sometimes long, particularly in the midst of turmoil and tragedy, especially when we know that that is going to be enduring because of a lingering illness or a very deep grief over the passing of our own loved ones. That peace for which we first see in the body is really just a temporary one. We want some solace. We want some comfort. And indeed, it's good to desire that as well. But what Jesus has come to bring to Jerusalem, indeed to all of the Jews dwelling there, and even further to all the people of the world, is a divine and eternal peace. A peace not merely of the mind or of the heart, but of the soul. This is why he has come to visit the world. He who has descended from his heavenly throne. He's come into the world in human form that he might save mankind. But for his part, he who lives completely that life of perfection that no fallen, frail human can. He comes in human form so that he might shoulder the burden of the world's sin and put it to death as God's sacrifice for the sins of the world so that all sin might be destroyed in him 
And he will take up his life again on that third day so that all who trust in him might see a sure and certain demonstration of the word that he declares again to you this day. He who believes in me will never die. Will never experience the everlasting death and separation from God that is otherwise for the unbelieving. And that's why Jesus weeps. Because of those who have refused the work and word of his Holy Spirit. The Spirit who is proclaiming that Jesus is Lord. That he's God in the flesh. And that what we see in Jesus, we also ought to see God doing. So God is weeping. Because his people will not hear him. Will not believe him. Will not put their trust in him. We see in part why. Because the temple in the city of Jerusalem had been corrupted. It was no longer a place in which the word of God was proclaimed with its full truth and purity. Where the sacraments of God were administered to provide the grace to his people dwelling there. So that they would be filled with faith and hope and love to know the eternal love of God. Because they had made it a place of merchandise. For the many people who traveled to Jerusalem to have the Old Testament sacrifices conducted for them, the sacramental in way in which God provided his graces to his people of old, so that they might not have to take their animals from far away as they traveled, perhaps over long distances, by foot to Jerusalem. They could find animals there for sacrifice, except those who ought otherwise provide them at a fair price were quite literally fleecing the sheep, overcharging them, both with regard to the exchange of their foreign money, as well as for the sale of the sacrificial animals. And so Jesus had come there to purge that temple of the evil and to replace it with the good and his good spirit so that the word and the sacraments of God might have their effect in the lives of the people, especially building up faith and trust and granting peace. This is what Jesus has come today to do as well. To work in the temple of human hearts. To put us in mind of our holy baptism. Even as was demonstrated to us this day in Wiley Michael's baptism. The mighty work of God exorcising unclean spirits and making way for his Holy Spirit, which he has imparted to Wiley Michael on this day, in the miracle of the water and the word. He continues to do that, even as we see the significance, its daily ongoing effect in the life of the Christian. It's not about a one-time historical act. So even while many of you will remember August 13th, 2023, as that day that God baptized Wiley Michael Bork, every day for him, as every day for the Christian, is a celebration of holy baptism, as God, by the power of his word and his spirit, continue to cleanse the temple of our hearts. That same word that declares that Jesus is Lord sets him up on the throne of our hearts as our king. And then as royal subjects, 
to the king of the universe, the king of everlasting love, we live, truly live, in faith, in hope, in love, at peace. Amen. Peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.